So here we are then in the magnificent Pavilion Theatre in Glasgow, my favourite theatre. Listen, no, I'm not just saying that. I've played the Theatre Royal, the King's Theatre, the Armadillo. This is the one. Vegas. In, in Vegas. Thank you. We'll come to that in a minute. Thanks, Jim. Um, I remember Paul John Dykes back in deepest, darkest lockdown when it was just a wee audio. It wasn't the all singing, all dancing, amazing, you know, uh, act song that it is now. And it was just an audio. And you, you know, Jim Orr, your mutual friend, had said, Des McLean would be worth a wee chat and stuff like that, but all things Celtic. And uh, it was really funny. And it was, thank you. And it was, uh, it was, it was great because we had nothing to do during lockdown. The only, the only entertainment we had was that eight o'clock on a Thursday night, clapping the NHS. This was something great. We spoke for about two hours, myself and the great Paul John Dykes. And uh, I was say, at the very end of the conversation, near the end, uh, Paul John said, he says, so, well, there's a, here there's a wee kind of a project going on, a wee follow-up you might be involved in, a wee follow-up to Bend It Like Bratback. And I said, yes, I'm going to reveal it now. It's still in the pipeline. It's called Bend It Like Bertie. It's very early days. Jim Orr contacted me. We're in lockdown. We never know what's going to happen. And then, uh, obviously, we started off a wee, a wee kind of script read-through in Webster's Theatre on the West End. Then we, 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 we did The Beacon and you know, and we were still on the script. Then we did a tour, and uh, we started in Webster's, which and which is basically like Phil Hill compared to this today. We're in the Pavilion Theatre. We've arrived here in Seville. If if obviously uh, comedy shows were were uh, like football, this is us here. Look, we've arrived here in the magnificent Pavilion Theatre. It's just incredible. The whole journey of Bendit Liberty has been amazing. The highlight, I hear you say, what's the highlight, Desi boy? Highlight, Desi boy? What's the highlight, Des? For me, there's no question. Right, picture the scene. Picture the scene, we're in Motherwell Concert Hall. Motherwell Concert Hall, a brilliant theatre. It was sold out about four weeks in advance and it's the nearest theatre to Bertie Old's son, uh, Robert. And we said, Robert, do you fancy coming along? And he came along with all his family. His grandkids were all in the front row. Imagine this, right? The pressure's on. Robert's there with his, his wife, Susan. They're sitting in the second back row. I'll be up the back. And his family are all there. So you, 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 can't, you can't do anything but get it right. This is Robert's, uh, Bertie Old's family. And uh, I can't have him sounding like this or sounding like that. I need to nail, I need, I need to make sure everything is just perfect, everything's just magnificent. <sighs> it was total respect for the man. And I remember there was there was much more pressure that night. I'm not going to lie, much more pressure. The family's in, they know him better than anybody. At the end of the show, I thought, this has been a good one, good reaction from the audience. It was sold out, that always helps, a full, a full room. And then uh, the bang, bang, bang. A wee knock at the dressing room. It was Robert Ald, and Robert and said, me, and me, and me "Jim Orr was there too, Jim." And uh, he came in. Robert came in with uh, which ex Celt did he come in with? Uh, Pat McGinley. Pat McGinley. Has, there you go. Has he stayed, changed that much? He's not changed a bit. He's, he's changed that much? Stayed pals with Robert Ald. Wee bit of trivia for you there. He, and he loved it. He loved, he loved it. it. They all loved, loved it. it, and they all came in. And Robert's wife stuck him in. She went. He's been breaking his heart. He's been breaking his heart. His eyes were all, I'm not just saying it, and he went, it was brilliant, Des, you were brilliant as my dad. And that's all I wanted to hear. That was it. For me, that was it. And then I thought, you can't get a bigger seal of approval than that. And he says, listen, Des, he went, by the way, what size do you take in a, in a jacket? And Jim Orr just came in without hesitation and said... 42 medium. <laughs> 42 medium. And he just came straight <laughs> in. 42 medium. Straight out of EB, a tenner. Right. And I, I never thought, I never thought anything else about it because we were caught up after the show, <coughs> your brains, you know, like mush and I mean, up the road. It was a really, it was probably the best show of the, is that fair to say? It was probably the best show of, of, the, of the tour up until that, right, so far. And then the next day at lunchtime, I get a wee WhatsApp message and it was like, who's that? You know, and it was a photograph of a green jacket, a blazer. It was Bertie Odd's blazer. And Robert, his son, said, here's a present for you from my mum. Oh, my God. And I was like, what? Rubbing my eyes, looking at it. What, what? And my wife went, what's wrong? I went, that's Bertie Old's blazer. That's Bertie Old's blazer. And he's, he says, I have to, I have, to have it. I have, it's for me. It's a present. It's, and the, it's still keep, sinking in. And, I, and Jim went, are you sure it's to keep? I says, I'm sure it's to keep. And he, and he went, wear that. You know, we pried. We wore it. I, I, Robert, actually, I met Robert on the Monday. No, it was on the Tuesday, was wasn't it? it? I was it's excited fine. that weekend. And it, it was a Cinderella moment. Robert just tried the jacket on and it fitted me like a glove, like an absolute glove. I had all these plans. Well, get it taken in, I'll get it thing. No, it was unbelievable. I was, I was absolutely, you can imagine, broken hearted. Those tears of sadness turned to tears of joy on the Wednesday morning when I got three and a half grand for it on eBay. 
No, 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 no. I'm only joking, I'm only joking, I'm only joking. Five grand. No, five grand. Um, so you can imagine, you can imagine how I felt. And do you know what? I'm going to show you all now. This is it. Look at this. 30 olds, Lisbon line, razor. <laughs> the security core van, armoured tank is outside. Right, so... There you go. So is that the highlight? Is that the highlight? You know, the family coming along, then giving me that. That doesn't get any better than that. But now we're in the Pavilion Theatre. We're going to Vegas next year. We're playing the same theatre as Barry Manilow. He's going to, his, his two nights off, we're doing Ben de Liberty. Could you imagine that? Bermuda Tricolour makes people disappear. Bermuda Tricolour, don't go too near. I want Barry Manilow to give out flyers of Ben de Liberty. You know, that's, that's, on, that's on my bucket list for next year. No, we, we can't complain. The journey, Mr Dykes, has been incredible. To go from, you know, a wee, a wee idea, a wee something. Big idea. A, a wee idea big that became idea. a big idea. And Jim Orr said to me, how's your Bertie old? I worked on it and then I came back and then you're getting the blazer and you're going to Vegas. It doesn't get much better than that. So people say to me, what's it like playing a Celtic legend? Lisbon Lion and legend and just all round the greatest ever sell. Me and your, your Tony Haggerty, uh, an Axon favourite, um, said that he, we both agreed that, that Bertie Old was the greatest ever sell. No question, as far as I'm concerned, he was the greatest ever sell. Brilliant footballer, great ambassador, just a great character, had time for everybody. That was our opinion. And Tony actually said to me one time, he says, Every Celtic fan dreams about playing for Celtic, about running out. We always a dream, imagine scoring the winner for Celtic. He says, However, is this not the next best thing? Putting on his, I says, do you know something that is? I feel like a superhero. Like, da, 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 da. Bertie Old. I've got Bertie Old's blazer, and, and when I'm up there for a family to say that, that is what it feels. It's the next best thing to running out for Celtic, is to wear the great man's jacket. I genuinely can't, honestly, you couldn't, you can't put it into words. Um, it is, it's just to put that jacket on, you become Bertie up there. <clears throat> and uh, it's, it's just incredible. But it's all down to this man, Jim Moore. It really is. I, I, I've got to say, right, without blowing smoke up his arse, I've never met a guy who I thought I, you know, I thought I, I was like like anal and, and, and attention Cheers, to detail Paul. and all that. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. And then through lockdown, he was the human podcast. You'll know this, right? I would just go, Jim, what do you think? Forecast for Saturday. And he would talk for an hour. Now and again, I would get a wee word in. But good, good quality chat. Live, exclusive, one-to-one -one from Jim Orr. So I knew this guy's good, right? Loads of chat, loads of enthusiasm. Attention to detail was frightening. Loved all the same shows, all the kind of same comedy stuff. I would send me YouTube clips. But then we get down to Nitty Gritty. Can we do this? Bend it like Bertie. Can... And then the night before Bertie passed away, we were doing a show down in Greenock. And, and his son... And the rest of the family came to that one, but it was such a sad, sad night. We knew what was happening, we knew Bertie was hanging on. And, and Robert came and uh, gave us a wee message, sent a wee message saying, I need to leave. And he was obviously going to the hospital, and the next day Bertie died. So after that, Jim would always say, this is not the uh, Bertie old story, which it isn't. However, after that, it became a massive Bertie old tribute. It is, if you like Bertie old, if you're a fan, you're going to love it. But it became more of the Bertie old story as in his career at Celtic from start to finish um, th than it was before and th there was more, I had obviously a lot more to learn after that and that, that suited me fine because a lot of the criticism, good criticism, constructive was just not enough of Bertie, we want more Bertie and then after after what happened when Bertie sadly passed away it was more Bertie from start, you know, all the way through it so but when you come and see that at the Pavilion Theatre you'll soon find that out Big juicy plug, Jim I think it was a combination of two things, I think uh Tommy Burns story came on just afterwards and I, the Tommy Burns story is about Tommy Burns it's just it's, it's his story which is fair enough so if people seen that they kind of thought well this isn't the Bertie Old story and it was never advertised as the Bertie Old story so that plus his sad passing and the feedback we got I mean, I mean as I've said before Bertie's in the play Bertie's in the play and I think the example I used last time was that if a new James Bond film came out and Bertie was in a new James <laughs> Bond film and he was like 001030 yes. that's what it's like uh, because I, one of the kind of one of the comments I liked the best was actually from Bertie's granddaughter who said it was insane. 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 So for the young generation that means insane, it's really good. That means it's cool. <laughs> uh, so that was good, yeah. So it was rewritten to have a bit more of Bertie in it, because how it works is basically it's uh, it's about the sixty five cup run, uh, which is the launch pad of Lisbon Lines, as everyone knows. Uh, and Bertie's doing a QA 
uh, at a football memories session. And the other thing I was keen to do was try to raise a bit of money for football memories. So I think over the course of the last year, we raised about just over four grand or so for, mm -hmm. for football memories, uh, which is an Alzheimer's Scotland project. And uh, that features in the play. So it will raise awareness of football memories. Uh, and Des recently did a, a newspaper piece where uh, they get photographed at Hamden. Uh, uh, we had over some the money was used for something called memory boxes, whereby it's a kind of big kind of box full of chock full of memorabilia. So it's like old football, old leather footballs, genuine or newly made uh, leather laced up. But footballs. the boots weren't newly made. They couldn't make these again. They said these were the original boots. Original boots that are, that are, that are <sighs> nailed in. Those nailed in oh. ones. Uh, also had the carbolic soap. That was the other one they had. Uh, Bijan Abovro. Dublin, Dublin yeah. as well. So the kind of sense is not just the kind of what sparks your memories. These spark your memories. So, so that was a good thing that we tried to do to raise awareness of uh, football memories. I was in Scotland and raise a couple of bob. And in the interim period uh, since Bertie's sad passing, uh, friends and family of Bertie have set up a new charity called the Bertie Old Legacy, uh, and. The plan for, for this time is we'll give 50% of the profits split between Football Memories and the Bertie Old Legacy. So that's another wee, another wee plug for that. So that's another good reason for coming along to see it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, what are we talking about? Fo uh, football Memories. If 50% uh, of the profits go to this. I, I, I've got to admit, I didn't know what Football Memories was. And I was blown away. I went along to Hamden two weeks ago. And the, the, all these volunteers give up their time. Jim goes all the time. And that that whole box with the old football, it is incredible. You're looking at these things and it does, it sparks up memories. You know, just a picture, a photograph sparks up all these of a, an old footballer from back in the day and it gets, that's it, and it all it all kicks off in the, in the mind. It's incredible, it really is incredible. And I went along to meet them all and I ended up doing 40 minutes for them all, for all the volunteers. One guy walked out. It says it was, was <laughs> no, it was brilliant, and there were these guys know their football. I mean, he knows his Ooh, football, but he really, really, really knows you. See, it's like third line, it was three one. There was only seventeen thousand four hundred in that game. These guys, but the work they do is incredible. It really, everybody's been affected. Most people, you know, by Alzheimer's and the, this. Bert himself and Bert himself and Jim went along during lockdown, semi lockdown. We went along to Bertie's local golf club and. And uh, Bertie was sitting there, and, and Jim Jim loves telling his stories. You want to tell it when when Bertie Jim took his photographs from Football Memories long. Uh, football Memories. <clears throat> you try and use football uh, photographs, football cards to try and spark spark memories. And uh, we went to see <clears throat> went to visit Bertie. And obviously, Des has met Bertie a number of times. This is the first time I'd ever met Bertie Old, and he's going to greet you like a long lost friend. Jim, how are you doing? You've had a play, brilliant. That's great. And uh, so this was about a year before it was on. Aye, easily. I didn't aye, know it was going to be on because of. COVID. No, oh God, and, uh, it was on and off and on and off. So it was to get his permission to say, don't worry about this, this will be fine, because you're going to hopefully see Ben and Bertie kicking about the city, and this is what's behind it. And because he was a big fan of yours, so he knew you, so yeah. that was that was a good start. And then uh, He knew me from Vegas, he knew from Vegas. That's and story. the Ranza Bar in Black Hill. That's, well, another, that's story. another story. Anyway. And, uh, so Robert came and uh, introduced his, to his dad, and then the kind of highlight of my year was, was when, uh, when Robert had to go to pick up his wife and you to make a phone call. Mm -hmm. as you're always doing and it was just me and Bertie for about 15-20 minutes and imagine just sitting when you're Todd with Bertie old uh, surreal and uh, it was almost like you're looking at yourself looking down chatting to Bertie old and I'd brought some of these cards with me uh, fortuitously and uh, so the first one I show him is Bertie old obviously so he looks at it handsome man him what a player what a player he was and, uh, and then Showed him other cards as well, and he was like, oh, "Dirty big bastard." <laughs> he did. It just seemed some some guy say he played for maybe <laughs> Derby County or something, something Aberdeen. big, oh. and he'd turn and go, "Ah, see him there, I stiffened him the first off, and he said, right, I say, see you, yeah, but and it got right, right, and big that right, that Yates came out of me, well, I fucking <laughs> stiffened him, and then I get the old red care death it. Oh, I gave him up, I leathered him, and it, it really got it all going, and the bold bear, it was just like just one photo, simple. Bang, Simple all bang. that stuff. He so remembered stiffening somebody in the first all, few minutes. Yeah. He knew them all and he was really entertaining and really interested in the football memory oh stuff. Why? And then, unfortunately, Des came back and Robert came back. So I had to share Bertie with these mm -hmm. other two people. But uh, that's, that was that was the highlight of 2020. And, but Bertie. I need to mention that the beauty of the beauty, uh, and everyone says that Bertie has always, he's always got time for everybody. He loves a blether, he loves a joke, he loves a song. 
you know, it just he always give me a son, come here, <clears throat> and, and it, it just blathers everybody. But I met him in the infamous Ranza Bar in Black Hill, right? The Ranza Bar. I went along to this night. It was a charity night. Me, him, and Macavenny. I was talking about this at the Legacy Saturday morning for the launch of Bertie's new. The, the, the new Betty Old Charity. And honestly, the, the, this place in the in Black Hill didn't have any windows. And I wonder why, right? Didn't have any. It was like a wimpy <laughs> uh, building, like porter cabin. That's what it looked like. And then suddenly they, they put a, a double glazed window in it. And the owner asked me to go along because I was on the radio at the time, local celebrity, and says, Des, we want you at the opening of the new window. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm standing where we bought the walk fast going, it is a pleasure, an <laughs> honour and a privilege to all who drinks in here, you know, bang with the wee bottle of walk against this new window. I was at the opening of the window and Betty's like, that's a good window, that. is, that, is that a magnet in Southerns? It's a really good window, double glazed. <laughs> so, uh, I, that's that. so I met Bertie there, he's in the Ranza Bar on a Wednesday night, a charity night, a charity night for a, a great cause, and he's there and then you, meet, you, you, you go from the Ranza Bar in Black Hole on a rainy Wednesday night to Vegas, so Bertie would be everywhere, you know, and he would still, you know, he'd be there for everybody. And you spent 10 hours on a plane back to Bertie? I, I sp that, that was like a competition one. You imagine that, 10 hours, Bertie's sitting there talking away. I mean, there was just one time, right, wee Jinky, oh, big jock, he's at the phone all night, you know, and, I'm, and we're in Wish on this pub, and I says, Jinky, don't go. And I'm hearing all these stories for 10 hours, non-stop, and, and by the way, he could talk better, he could talk more than me, more than Jim, and it was non-stop, and I'm hearing all these unbelievable exclusive stories all, all the way. You know, know the way, as on a plane, you're like, oh, this is boring, I've, I've read that book, I've read that magazine, I've watched that movie. Bertie always telling you everything for 10 hours, non-stop, everything. Uh, that, was, that was an experience as well, and then it's funny how life turns out, isn't it? Then you're, you're, you get his blazer, you're in the pavilion, amazing, amazing. That's, cause you made, that's, that, that's how you made the short list. <laughs> aye, I'd, down to the last 20 when I went for the interview that, that impressed Jim that was all that stuff so there you go aye, <laughs> what you said was that you would like to be in a Celtic play aye. and I'd well, said I'd written this thing called Bend Like Bertie and then by the time I got home you'd left this five minute message on <laughs> my phone that said Big Jock would always say <laughs> you have the ability to entertain to end, if you could go out there and entertain that's, that, that's the main thing. But we jinky, no, nobody entertained more than we jinky. Jinky would put bums on seats, then he would get you up off your seat. What a player he was. And I said, who is this? I promise you, son. <laughs> yeah, he did, Jim. Like, who is this? It's better old day in front of me. <laughs> I promise you this, Jim. Honestly, you know this better than me. I could, be, I could go and do that play. And see, Paul John Dykes always says I was a bit of a gangster, right? I used to see, see your peaky blinders. I'd go up there and I'd fuck stiff in them as well. And then, but no, no, me and wee Jinky and ah, oh, I promise you, son, honestly, it was all about entertainment. If you could go there and entertain, and that's what you're going to do here in the Pavilion Theatre, go there and entertain. By the way, you could see Bertie and Billy and all that all sitting here in the Pavilion, couldn't you? And during, you know, back in the 60s, this would be a big night out for the Lisbon Lions, eh, Jim? Look at it. I mean, you could just imagine it just like this. Aye, no, it's it's uh, fantastic and magnificent, uh, as Bertie yeah, would it's, say. It's a bit of a it's been a bit of a journey, yeah. Because I had no expect. I mean, the reason it's got as far as it has it's because of this man here. Uh, because you need somebody to to champion something. Because I'd never when I first did this, did the kind of Ben like brought back. I thought just write it, stick it on for a couple of nights, and then move on to the next thing. And then that became the feedback for that was good, and we end up in the SEC. See me better to do that, do a few nights, but this man had different plans for it. Uh, we'll do this, and then we'll do that, and then we'll do that, and then we'll hit Vegas with Barry Manolo. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I, well, that's, that's how it work. All right, so. You can't, I mean, the, the funny, it was just one of the guys, right, Manolo's going to be on, but his two nights, I just thought, Barry Manolo, Bert, it's just, it's, you know, it's so surreal. Bend like Barry, that's the next one. Bend like Manolo is the next one. one. Barry, Barry, yeah. Alliteration is important. In terms of thinking what to, what to write next, uh, what, what I tend to do, I mean, I'm, I, this is a hobby, so it's meant to be fun, and so it has to be a comedy. Uh, so no, no matter what way, it has to be a comedy. And I find it difficult to write somebody's life story because I wouldn't find it interesting, you know. So you could write the Billy McNeil story tomorrow, or the Jock Steen story, or the, or the Jimmy Johnson story tomorrow. The point of the plays is, is to try and tell uh, a wee bit of the history of Celtic, but in a comedy framework. I'm a bit of fantasy thrown in as well. You've seen both the Celtic ones, so you know what mm -hmm. I'm talking about, basically. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so that's the objective. Uh, and nostalgia as well being a kind of old kind of person that, that people don't know the stories they don't know the ones you can find and you didn't know a lot of the stories about, about, about Bertie not no. so much about Bertie about what actually happened mm -hmm. back then mm -hmm. and very few people do because if you to say what happened in 65 we won the Scottish Cup 
Tell me someone else. Eh, uh, I'm not very sure what happened. Well, Jock Steen came back, I knew that. I Bertie came back, did he? Oh, did Bertie come back? I did. Right. So you then, when you're doing the research, as Paul John Dykes does a lot of that research, he's a good guy for doing that. When you do your research and you go back and you realise the 65 Cup winning team wasn't about Jock Steen at all, it was about Bertie Old. Because Bertie came back at the start of January and then if you look at the games that he played, St Mirren's the first game at Love Street. What's the headlines in the paper? Bertie this, Bertie that. Mm-hmm. He's the star mm-hmm. man mm-hmm. of the game. The second round we go to Queen's Park, pick up the papers, Bertie this, Bertie that. Mm-hmm. He's the star man. Kilmarnock the next round, 1-3-2. Bertie scored. Bertie's the star man. So first the game. Mm-hmm. And then Jock Steen comes back. Yeah. Right? And they play Motherwell in the semi-final and they're jammy to give away a two-each draw. Really lucky. Steen's getting slaughtered with the, the fans picking the team he picked. Whatever. Bertie scores that game again. Mm. Bertie's a star man. They win the replay 3 nothing. They get to the final. And people can remember the final. But then you say, well, I know we won 3-2. Big Billy scored the goal. What else happened in the final? Don't know. Right. So what else happened in the final? Was when Fairman scored first, Bertie equalises. When Fairman scored again, Bertie equalises. And then Billy scores the winner. That's the story of that. So the story of the 65 Cup final, which is the launch pad to the Lisbon Lions, because they won nothing in 12 years before that. So all that stuff is mentioned in the play. The factual kind of mm-hmm. stuff, but it's told through the eyes of a family, yeah, at the time. And, and, and Bertie's in the play as well. And this is a kind of long winded way of trying to answer your question, but these are stories are worth telling, the details are worth telling because what actually happens when you get into the, the minutiae or something, you get down other rabbit holes and you think, Well, did that happen? Did this happen? Mm-hmm. Who was that referee? He refereed that game, who did you know? So, and then again, uh, things like the Motherwell game. Uh, uh, didn't he play well drew to each in the semi-final had a goal chalked off in the last minute for offside it was dubious apparently mm. you know so you're thinking that's interesting so you, you get into all this kind of stuff so Bertie uh, what, did, what did Bertie do for Celtic how many games did he play yeah. in the sport well, it's, it's, in the play. Right it's in the play uh, yes I know it's uh, <laughs> uh, 379 games for Celtic no keep going thanks for keep that <laughs> was it 85 goals, right? Yeah, 85 goals. Uh, did, did, did I get no, it right? I think that's pretty close, right? 379 games for Celtic, 85 goals, uh, six Scottish Cups, five League Cups. No, no, six I'm League Cups. Right, right, right. I know, you're right, you're right. Six League Cups, six Scottish Cups. Sorry, keep going. Oh, he's put me right in the spot there. I'm, not, I'm a wee bit rusty when I get all day. Uh, <laughs> no, you're right, you're right, you're right so far. Aye. That's good, right? No, in the right. Cup with the big ears. That's why you were hired. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. I think I think he scored one in four, something like that, mm-hmm. which is a pretty good record for, because he's not known for somebody that scores a lot no, of goals. Uh, Eighty-five goals, that's some return from midfield, isn't it? We could do we one of them now uh, in this current team. Aye, so uh, people know him for the big things that you said before, Paul. Uh, also, you say you know you know you would say to people, did he play in the seventy final? Yes or no? Some people say yeah, some people say no, he did. He played one of his worst games and he took off just before ninety minutes. That was the lowest point of his career. Uh, but let's not dwell mm-hmm. on that. High points beating Leeds, he's got the hat on, ever. Uh, played the most successful Celtic team ever, was voted into the greatest ever Celtic mm-hmm. team, mm-hmm. along with most of the Lisbon Lions. Uh, a real iconic figure, and as I've said about any of the Lisbon Lions, these are just ordinary people who led this extraordinary life. Imagine with Bertie all for the past 50 years. Everywhere you go, there's Bertie, and he had the mm-hmm. time to talk to everyone. He never mm-hmm. went past people. He was, he was always very, very good with his time, especially you. <laughs> and and uh, also, Bert, Billy Conley said, if, if Bertie wasn't a footballer, he'd be a stand-up comedian. Oh my God, his comedy timing's brilliant. See? And that's what he said, the great man. So he had it all, Bertie. He did. Talented footballer, brilliant comedian, gallus. If the word, you know, you look up in the, the, the dictionary, gallus is very old. old. And I think he would have, like, a lot of the lines would have wanted to stay on longer than he did, but Steam was, I think, was quite ruthless in terms of and he had all these, had the Quality Street gang coming through next to Doug Leishes and McCarries on, he couldn't hold these guys back. So, uh, off to Hibs. How many games did he play for Hibs? He only played 11. There you go. See, see. Attention to detail. <sighs> see. Pressures were on the day, innit? You asked me to be on this, I was happy for you to do yeah, yourself, pal. Yeah, but yeah. you know, you said drag them more on 11 games for Hibs, yeah. I was happy. Watch you do this. Yeah. Do your Billy Conley. 
11 um, games for Hibs because he heckled one night wasn't it not heckled but somebody shouted something about this Hibs fan I, a guy thought they were going to be talking about his muscle bro I know a guy and I says I, a guy heckled me and went eh, what about the Hibs and I went only played 11 games for your mob it's no double act shut the fuck up what about the Hibs what, what about the Hibs I know but it was muscle bro so there you go Pan your yeah. thistle guy come next week Pan your thistle but uh, yeah and he's only the only player to sign for Celtic three, three times, times as well he does have a, a pretty impressive CV when it comes to Celtic though. he's got it right. all so yeah to, to be Bertie all for the past 50 years must have been to be any of the lines but because he was such a confident guy and we'd be talking about the bit I mean obviously there's all these clips on YouTube and he's at, he's at Bears Bar he grabs a mic oh. and other, other lines are kind of thinking well <laughs> Bertie will grab the mic just leave it to Bertie right, I'll grab the brilliant mic. and he, he dealt you know, dealt with heckles he would bury people he'd come up with funny stories funny jokes we, and when I went on YouTube I thought you're like oh, I hope I've got something good to work with here something good <laughs> You've got, he's cut, that, cut that, cut that, 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 that. You could stand all night, you know, and you could actually stand on the stage for ninety minutes just telling funny Bertie stories, you know. And just, that was a balance in that. Aye. That 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 was a balance in that because, uh, as I said, what, what I didn't want to do is to to have too much Bertie taken away from the play because the play was about this story here, mm -hmm. about this family here, and the insane things that can happen therein, and we had. A bit of Bertie doing his Q and A at football memories. That, that was the first version, and then because but the now, feedback, they thought mm, Bertie's right through it. His whole career, for, then he's, he first then signed he's, for Celtic. Then he's doing his Q and A at yeah. football memories throughout the play, so right to the very end of his career. He's still in the play yeah. as well, and just so, Aye. so now it's a real fit and tribute. There's no, you so know, quite busy actually. You're quite busy in this play. Uh, yeah, I've got a lot. A lot. Yes, yeah. So they will learn your lines. I. You've only, is it four months ago? Four months Four months, about four months, and then we're here. We're uh, going to pavilion. walk out in the magnificent Bear Pavilion Theatre. And I, I need to tell you my funniest ever Pavilion Theatre story. Th this is a, a, a venue that I've walked out over 200 times easily, right? Have I think I Panto story? here, I think you might have heard mm -hmm. the story. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Panto here is a tin man. I've walked out here, uh, solo shows. Uh, Tommy Sheridan here at I, Tommy. Um, Pinocchio, I was Jiminy Cricket. But the best one was obviously the fire alarm always goes off, and if a fire alarm goes off, I think everybody just has to get out as quick as possible and as safely as possible, right? And the, this one night, <laughs> you, you're not, you can't change, you can't get changed, right? So I was a tin man. Game part was a line, and we Stephen Purden was that we shared the dressing room. Me and we Stephen Purden, and I can guarantee you, Stephen Purden will not be watching this show today. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> right? So, so we Stephen, we see a lot of banter back and forward, Celtic Rangers and all that, right? Great wee guy though. And uh, he was a scarecrow and the wizard of Oz. I was a tin man. Dean Park was a lion. It was pelting down, absolutely hosing it down. Torrential rain. The fire alarm went off and we went round the, that, that wee lane round the back. Nobody could see you. And we're standing. I smoked back then. We're standing having a fag like this. <sighs> we Stephen's having a fag and Big Dean's just standing blaring away. He's dressed as a lion. Exactly the way he is on stage. Stephen's dressed as a scarecrow and I'm dressed as a tin man. And a washing machine. Amazing. And a thing that you press and the steam came out. This wee Ned walked by <laughs> soaked to the skin and the wee Ned just looked at three years the tin man the lion and the scarecrow for the wizard was and the wee Ned went any of you boys got a fag <laughs> and wee Stephen Purden always had a wee sporran on because he was a wee Scottish scarecrow and he went hi there you go and give him two cigarettes and the wee Ned his next line will stay with me forever it will stay with me if I live to be a hundred right <laughs> he turned around and he curried in with the lion the scarecrow and the tin man for the wizard was and his next line will stay with me forever he went like so what are you up to then boys <laughs> 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 He's up to then, boys. You just took a fag off the line, the Tin Man, and the Wizard of Oz. Brilliant. I've said before that kind of football fans and theatre goers are maybe kind of two different people, and they tend not to merge very much. And I, I came to see the Celtic story here in 1988, the centenary season. Uh, Dave Anderson in, in the, the Wildcat Theatre, and I'd never been to the theatre before. And you thought, well, this is good. This is good. No, this was a Celtic thing. And, and I think you can put on a Celtic thing anyway. People like it because it's a Celtic thing. And I think that's one of the things that I was always wary of is, is that uh, I've been to a number of Celtic plays and all you've got to say is say, and Jimmy McGrew scored eight goals and people start clapping and cheering and, mm -hmm. and, you know, and put a picture of, you know, a Celtic and people start clapping and cheering. So it's an open goal. And what I didn't want to the end of the place to be was an open goal that people would just come along to see and it's just we're coming to because, and hence the kind of quirky titles like the kind of bend up like and whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and also the kind of, the quite savage nature of how people are dealt with. <laughs> yeah. Particularly Harold Brambach. So, 
Uh, that's the first time I'd been to the theatre. It was here. Uh, it was packed out. It was the Celtic story. And you thought, this is good. And that, that, that kind of planted a wee seed to me. My sister Alison's in the business. She's an, an actress, uh, singer, uh, and a number of other things as well. And 10 years later, I come to see it again. They brought it back uh, after the Wim Janssen season. It was on here again and came to see it. And I think that planted some seeds. Uh, and not that I went to much theatre after that, but uh, in 2008, Tony Roper wrote The Celts in Seville, and my sister was involved in co-producing that with the Celtic. And I got involved in that, and you know, long story short, that, that planted a wee seed as well. And it was seeing that and the involvement in that, because my sister knows nothing about football, so I went up the way getting uh, strips from that season, because the thing about Celtic fans, you can't put a Celtic play on and get the strips wrong, and Paul John Dykes would know all about mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. Can he do that? Because people will say, hold on, that was not the 2003, we're <laughs> yeah, only wearing them. That's right. That's this season's strips. So you had to make sure that you get strips, and if that goes for eBay, when you have these things, because you go back to then, and it was the, it was the NTL season, but when we qualify for Seville, the new Carling's tops, I'm just knowing the joke, Paul John Dykes, here, who knows this stuff, obviously backwards and forwards. So getting the memorabilia, uh, I know, when I say I, uh, who would play Boa Vista scarf as well on eBay and stuff because that was a wee scene that didn't it so when it planted a seed of things that I could do in the future I take it up as a hobby and it's just, it is still just a hobby but I then think well if I'm going to write some stuff I should go to the theatre more so I started going to see lots of different plays not just football plays not just comedy plays to give you a kind of a better understanding of how things work so that eventually when I did do this as a hobby you do realise it the first thing I wrote and if it there's about fifteen characters in it. And then you're thinking when you actually do think about it, how would you stage this? Mm-hmm. You've never stage this, that's too many characters. So you then start to realise the kind of tricks of the trade. But in terms of my relationship with here, it's a phenomenal theatre. It's an absolutely brilliant theatre. Des you, you you speak, you know It's 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 the best. It's it's incredible. It's my favourite theatre. It's perfect for Ben Delberti. And also nostalgic. Also <laughs> it tends to you know, it, it tends to be the ordinary man's theatre. You know, in terms of the other two theatres Absolutely. in Glasgow, you've got kind of maybe one's a bit more highbrow, and one's a bit in the middle, and this mm-hmm. is the kind of you know, it's a bit more accessible. Yes, totally. To more people, and it's a lovely theatre. It's just a phenomenal theatre. When you look at some of the, and I'm sure you'll do that when you be pan out some of the, the, some of the design and, and, and the cornicing and and all that stuff. It is quite phenomenal. And uh, to bring it here will be brilliant. But I said, a lot of that's down to the man here because he's a plan, and I've just kind of like went along with the plan. And just after the, the 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 big thing for the pavilion is the panto. Just after that finishes, February, first week, Ben Dilley comes. So there's here. your Christmas present. That's your Christmas present now. Ben that's a great tickets. idea. What a stocking filler that is. Got me what brilliant. Thanks a lot. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's that. You don't even need to think about what to get anybody now. Thanks, ben Dad. Thanks, Granda. That's good. That's that. You can that's take good. your mum. Your dad, dad, your brother, sister. And any. you can actually do that because that's all part of this. Oh, it's a must for any Celtic fan. I, I remember coming out to Webster's and there was a, a granddad and a wee a wee boy, he must the wee boy must have been fourteen. The wee boy loved it. They were all the same as Jimmy mentioned earlier. They were like, No way were Celtic that bad years ago because they've all been spoiled lately. And uh, yeah, even my mother, she laughed, she cried like many, but she said, "Oh, I love the music in it. The soundtrack's amazing. It's got the Beatles, the Stones, the Kinks, the Righteous Brothers. Great soundtrack all the way through it." Amazing. PJ Proby somewhere. Also, the main character is a female. Mm. That's yeah. another oh, thing that you're yeah. not trying to. It's kind of. Again, it'd be dead easy to, to put a football play on that's kind of like heavily focused on, mm-hmm. on the guys. And the football has changed dramatically in the last 30 years. In 1965, there wouldn't be many females going to those games. No, no. But we're talking sure. about something mm-hmm. that happened in 1965 mm-hmm. through the eyes of a female. Mm-hmm. You know? And uh, so that's, what's, that's what we try to do to make it a bit more. It's not just about Celtic fans. And you said that yourself about people who came to see it. That I've had uh, Rangers fans, uh, pals who genuinely through gritty teeth it says it was a great night. We loved it. And you know what? Bertie did kind of, he helped kind of cross that divide, didn't he? With a lot of, a lot of other fans of other teams just loved Bertie Old. You couldn't not love Bertie Old. What's the number of wives and girlfriends that came along to see it? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. It. It, it is definitely a play for mums, dads, Teenagers, all sorts, granddads. It is. It's got it all right up, right through the board, right across the board. Definitely. I'm not just saying that. It's, it's really. It's insane. <laughs> it's, <laughs> ins- it's insane. He loves that. It's insane. And that's. Oh, there's been lots of really nice comments. Maybe I thought that was the best. It's insane yeah. because 
that's what you're looking for because there's bits like, in it where I wasn't worried about it, but there's a bit you think that's that's a bit mad, and how will people react to that? Particularly Robert, he's he's son. There's a couple of bits that are just mm -hmm. way out there, way way out there, and I'm thinking. <laughs> and the bit that you added is uh, there's a really emotional moment, and I've always got a wee, you know, and would give mm. too much weight. And it's the big speech that you tested me on the other one about how <laughs> Bertie kind of gives his whole, you know, kind of his whole kind of career, and, and uh, that's really, really sad. But uh, it's, it's just it's brilliant, it's got everything you will laugh, you will cry, and uh, it's just, just a great, hopefully, great people think out. it's a good tribute to the man. Oh, it's very much a, a, a tribute to the great man, that's all you're looking for.